Hello everyone, this is Braylon Hans, astrologer with the Noble Source, back again. Here to give you a brief lecture about the introduction to palmistry. Because of time constraints, the meditation part of this uh, expo will be cut short. So we're going to get through these next presentations, and if we have time, we'll see about doing a brief guided meditation. But, introduction to palmistry. We'll begin with the physical construction of the hand itself. Whichever is your dominant hand is going to describe your outward personality. So if you are right-handed and you communicate with your right hand in terms of your writing, this is going to describe the hand that communicates how you react outward to other people. Your passive hand is going to describe the way you handle things on the inside. Differences between the hand. Inner and outward processes carry different energies, and these manifest as two different patterns on your right and left hands. If you are right-handed, then your dominant hand is your communicative, outward demeanor. Conversely, differences in the lines on the hand can reflect inward experiences, private or shy individuals, or how open we are about past experiences. Drawing differences between these two lines on either hand will also reflect how certain traits are expressed outwardly versus how they are actually processed inwardly. Marks such as scars, Birthmarks, moles, calluses, and abrasions to the skin should be examined by their relation to the surrounding lines and mounts, as well as unique shapes that affect the surrounding lines and areas. <clears throat> we'll be going in full detail about the mounts here in the future, but a few marks that you should be aware of. Scars will tend to reflect qualities of ourself that we're still holding on to, which we have uh, yet to heal. Calluses will be burnout, where areas there's been a lot of repetitive action and has developed thick skin as a result. Birthmarks and beauty marks tend to reflect latent potential in these areas. And abrasions and wounds on the skin can often reflect areas in the life where we have, been, where we have experienced pain or some type of wound. So in terms of construction of the hand, the blanket makes it look all wiggly. But you have what are called long palms and square palms. Rectangular palms tend to be very, let's see, here's a good example. Long palm and long fingers is a feeling type of hand. This is a water type of hand. So you'll notice that this is a very rectangular hand and possess about equally long fingers. Air hands, which are thinking type of hands, will have a square palm in relation to long fingers. So frequently you'll see that the, the width of the hand seems to be equal to the length of their hand. It tends to be very blocky in that shape. But the long fingers, you can take that in between wings and fins to help you remember. Long palm and long fingers are like fins, so they deal with motions in water, but square with long fingers are kind of like feathers. That's a great way to help you remember the difference between those two. We have a practical type of hand, which is a square type hand with short fingers. And a practical type of hand is gonna be your earth type of hand. These are the people that are builders, they like to acquire wealth, and tend to go through the life in a more practical way. And then we have the intuitive hand, which is represented in a long palm and short fingers, which is much more reflective of people who are fire signs, who possess a lot of creativity and artistic, uh, artistic nature. These are also excellent for helping you identify people's uh, elements and star signs, because they'll be very reflective of their own, their own signs and traits between the two. Here's some shapes and line markings that you should be aware of. Generally, horizontal lines, called transverse lines, tend to represent areas of challenges and difficulties that we face within our life. It also tends to embody the negative forces that we've encountered with whatever line that it's, that it's touching. Conversely, vertical lines will represent positive aspects in those, in those areas. Strengths that we have, have risen, it's also our, our skills, and traits that we possess. Grills 
are fairly common when they show up next to the thumb. You'll see a lot of gritting occur there, and that tends to be a, a culmination of your, uh, your creativity, as well as your appreciation for art, beauty, and nature. So you'll see that it'll form grids, little grids on your hand. Crosses or lines that move through another line uh, tend to be influence lines from outside forces. Something has moved through our line and has affected it in some kind of way. These tend to be external things, but they also tend to be hurdles. They tend to be uh, curve balls that have been thrown our way. To the right of that, we have our, what are called islands. And these will happen on your main lines as well. They're kind of like a blood clot that is preventing energy from moving effectively. And they can show up on any of your main lines. Squares are protective energy, but it also describes our defensive natures of ourselves. So areas that have square are areas where you might have protection in your life, or areas where you're trying to bring more security. With tridents come many choices, especially when it shows up on your, what will be shown to be your emotion line or your heart line, could show up as having many, uh, many partners and a lot of trial and error in these areas. But it's as though we've been on many paths or, or taking the different roads to get yourself where you are. There could be an adaptability if this is on your mental line in terms of, do you think with your heart? Do you think with your rationality? Or do you think with intuition? This is an example of three different directions this trident can take us. When it comes to triangles, the shape tends to be much more harmonious. These are aspects in our life that we're able to have cooperation and work with other people, and it tends to embody a blending of whatever lines are being touched. So for instance, if a triangle is touching both your mental line and your heart line, it's very similar to bringing emotionality and your intellectualism into harmony together. These are called tassels. They show up very frequently near the bottom of the wrist, especially on our fortune line. Our fortune line deals a lot, a lot more with uh, finding our purpose within life, and at the very beginning of it, uh, often it's very hairy. It's very difficult to find out that path you're supposed to take. It's the idea that energy has been spread too thin in too many projects, and that it's a, it's, it's, it's a weakness. Dots, when they show up on lines, affect deep, impactful moments that we've experienced in whatever line that we're going through. And when it comes to chains, which show up as like a little trail of, uh, of sharp little chains, tends to indicate a period where there were consistent difficulties and challenges that, that were being met. These are like having a bunch of different itty bitty islands put together. And islands weren't a very good trait to have. Line breakages, when line actually ends and starts in a different place, uh, for instance, on the lifeline, it can indicate uh, a, near, a, a life or death situation or having dealt with a hospitalization that's required you to read restart your life or, or, or send it in a different directions. If you have a line break on your mental line, it could be a mental breakdown. And conversely, on the heart, it could be show up as heart attacks or uh, end, abrupt ending to relationships and such. Stars are points where a whole bunch of lines of influence kind of come together in sort of starburst shape. And those tend to indicate uh, a real deep... Um, development and understanding with wherever the stars show up. Often these are talents that we possess. So there's some people that possess stars on their, on their heart line and they're able to uh, be open and love on levels that we can't understand. Or there's some people that have stars on their mental line which makes them very intelligent and gifted uh, mental individuals. One thing you will also see are upward lines and downward lines. When it comes to the way that energy expresses itself, upward lines will reflect uplifting energy, optimism. And lines that go downward with whatever line it touches will describe downward energy, like self-criticism and pulling yourself down. So if there is an upward energy in the matters of the heart, it could, return, it could express emotional optimism. But having downward lines on, say, your mental line will indicate that you're so self-critical you're bringing yourself down.
Here are the three main lines that show up on your hand. At the top, we have the heart line, which travels from the pinky across the palm. We have the head line, which is right above the life line. They tend to be joined together, but it's not always the case. It runs from the thumb side across the palm, and the lifeline runs from the thumb side down the wrist. Why this is important with which direction the lines run, because it actually is a chronicle of your history and your past experiences. So if we start here on the outside of the palm for the heart line, we can actually see experiences in childhood or, or within our, our early experiences in terms of our emotionality and learning about the heart. When it comes to the headline, this left side is going to represent that, that again, childhood experiences and, and learning and that development. And any islands in difficulty can indicate uh, struggles in those areas. And the lifeline tends to describe health and the house itself. This deals with your personal security and your physical health. And the longer that these two lines are joined, which a lot of people feature on their hands, tends to describe an extended amount of time before you got your independence. So if you see that there are people who have this line joined with this one for an extended amount of time, for them it may have been harder for them to assert their independence. It might have been harder for them to leave the home to find their own life. If the lines are separate, which is in this case here, this indicates being uh, independent from a young age and kind of autonomous and that you didn't need uh, a whole lot of uh, parental influence. Difficulties that show up on the lifeline, whether it's islands or, or line breaks, will describe illnesses or periods where you felt insecure. So just to go through them, the heart line, which is also known as the love line, gives indications into a person's emotional state and their emotional and physical relationship with others. Gives clue to overall heart health. The health line, I'm sorry, the head line is known as the mental line gives indication to a person's thinking state and to their intellectual and logical relationship with their ideas. Gives clues to their overall mental health. And the lifeline, known as the health line, it gives indication to a person's physical health and their relationship with security and the home. Gives clue to illnesses and overall vitality. Now one thing that I've had a lot of elderly people ask me about is they'll come in and get a palm reading and they'll ask, well can you tell when I'm going to die? And when it comes to matters of the palm, it's really much more of a present and past kind of message here. It's not likely to give you any ideas about how many children you're going to have or, or if you're going to live a long life or not. What you can gauge from it, however, is if you've been making unhealthy choices and, and that these unhealthy choices, choices may be bringing you into difficult experiences. Here is the fortune line that I talked about earlier. It runs from the base of the palm and runs its way up to the middle finger. When this line is really strongly represented, it's that we are closely, uh, closely in tune with who we are or what we want out of our life in terms of our, our drives and our aspirations and ambitions. So that's why it tries to climb toward what would be called the Mount of Saturn because it deals with that seeking of fulfillment through your spiritual quest. This is also interesting because this actually lines up in, in some uh, Vedic understanding of palm reading, implementing the Kundalini, which is the seven chakra colors with the fortune line. So one thing that can be assessed by the fortune line is where other people's uh, energy requires addressing. It starts from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and to the crown chakra. So any stoppages in these areas, you can interpret as having difficulties with any of those energy points. For an example, if we have a fortune line that runs all the way up but stops at the mental line, we can assess that the person's thoughts have, are what has limited their, their development. Another idea is matters of the heart. There may be some people who have difficulty expressing and feeling their emotions, that it has caused um, a slowing of the fortune line. The fortune line is known as the line of fate, also the destiny line. It describes the individual's relationship with their purpose, gives clues to one's connection with career, and how one is seeking fulfillment and self-actualization. What you'll frequently see, especially um, since it runs 
bottom up, so youth to our progression, is that a lot of people will have a lot of forking or a lot of tasseling at this bottom part of the wrist. And what that will indicate is there was a lot of trial and error in defining their purpose and experiences and it took making some mistakes and, and choices to find out who they are and what they wanted out of their life. Here's some other important lines. This is the marriage line, also known as the relationship lines and lines of affection. They tend to run on the outside of the pinky and they sometimes come, come in. And the length of which tends to describe uh, the, the extent of the relationship and the time period that was shared between the two. Tends to describe uh, deep, affectionate relationships. They don't have to be physical relationships, but can also be uh, deep friendships and relationships with family that can show up on their relationship line. One thing else that happens off of this is that vertical lines that come off of relationship lines tend to represent children. And so it's very possible to, to guess um, a client's number of children by assessing their, their small vertical lines that might come off of their, their horizontal lines. Some areas to watch out for, however, is that it is right next to the pinky, which can also get vertical lines for a different reason, and not to get them mixed up. This denotes close affection, affectionate relationship and personality connections. Gives clues as to one's closest connections, friends and spouses. This is the line that's moved toward your, toward your pinky. And this deals with your experiences in education, especially early education, public. It's described as your education line and learning line. It highlights your educational drive, your higher thinking, and relationships with the education system. It is pronounced as communicativeness and an ease of information and absorption. So a very strongly expressed light of mercury can express a very uh, deep receptivity to new information and learning. But this can also describe if you've had any difficulties with the uh, authoritative natures of the school system, or whether or not uh, there was a lot of trial and error in this area and you might have to be self-taught. There's also the traditional um, representation that this line of mercury also tends to indicate hepatic health, which is the health of your liver. Now we're going to talk about the mountains of the palm. These are various fleshy mounds on our hand which, uh, however strongly they are expressed, will indicate certain qualities of, of these planets and signs. Here we have the Mount of Venus next to our thumb. The Mount of Venus is located on the palm of the hand and at its base between the thumb and the lifeline. It is an indicator of love, romance, passion, sensuality. The lovers one chooses and physical appearances. If this mount is normally elevated, that means very, very fleshy, it can indicate an attractive and healthy individual who is passionate about the arts and finer things of life. Sensuality in particular is very important to Venus. It can also represent someone who is well-respected, influential, and enjoys the benefits of true friendships. If it appears overdeveloped, this can indicate an individual who overindulges and is promiscuous. It can denote denote an individual who seeks instant gratification. If this mount is flat or absent of influence, it indicates a person who does not have a connection to family life. He may face a lot of troubles and might possibly suffer from illnesses through the hardship. It can also indicate someone who easily criticizes others and who is not taken in by physical beauty. Here we have, opposite of that, it's what's called the Mount of the Moon. This is located opposite of the thumb, the palm at its base, the side of the little finger on the hand. It is an indicator of your intuition. This is your creativity and your vivid imagination. If this mount is strongly defined, you can indicate a person with, ex with excellent creative power. This individual may have a love of the arts and nature. 
It also represents someone who has great intuition or psychic abilities. He is compassionate and helps any friend in need. The individual loves the ocean. If it appears overly developed, this individual may be letting his imagination run wild. This clouds reality. The individual may draw themselves into their own fantasies. So anytime you have lines or markings showing up on the mount of the moon, it's going to indicate how you are received, receptive to intuitive energies, as well as how you are handling your own inner emotional natures. So if you have difficulties in this, in this area, you might feel uh, cut away from spirit, or on some level uh, not, not getting the answers you seek, it might show up as abrasions or calluses or other difficulties on this mount. A flat or absent mount of the moon can indicate a person who prefers to be at home and one who might have a good imagination, but shares it only with themselves. It can also indicate someone devoid of imagination who exhibits pessimism and lacks enthusiasm. This can be a closed down individual who is deep in his own thoughts. So it changes it from imagination being available instead of imagine being unavailable. It's just more of the private... Uh, introverted nature of it because of the lack of influence instead of it being positively expressed. Mars exists in two places. We have upper and lower Mars. Upper Mars will reflect temperament toward your moral courage. A strongly developed mount will denote a stubborn, defiant individual who is not one to enter or given to take not one to enter into a give-and-take situation. If this mount is absent or flat, this is a sign of one's inability to express true feelings. Their, ability, their inability to avoid confrontation and anxiety-provoking environments. If it is normally elevated, the individual has strength and courageous, well-balanced and healthy. It's the idea of feeling confident and safe in your, in your own environment in order to act out in it. The lower mount, which is on the right side there, signifies an individual's enthusiasm, aggression, and physical courage. If it appears overly developed, the individual may be quick-tempered or overindulgent, egotistical and confrontational and argumentative. If it doesn't have any development or if it's absent or flat, it can indicate a cloud of uncertainty around the individual, a lack of self-esteem and confidence, difficulty getting motivated. It also is a sign of your inability to express your true feelings and to be withdrawn when uncertainty is there. So Upper Mars, when it deals with more moral courage, um, I frequently describe it as willing to stand up uh, to, a, to a bully in someone else's defense, um, to do the right thing like socially. And then the lower amount will describe how you respond to emergency situations and that require you to, to show that physical courage. Each of the bases of the finger is also associated with a particular mount. I describe the line of fortune as traveling toward the mount of Saturn, which is the middle finger. The mount of Jupiter, however, this indicates how you perceive the world and how you want to be viewed by others. It has a lot to do with your determination, ego, need for power, and control. This is accomplishment and leadership. If this mount is elevated and prominent, this can indicate an individual who has divine aspects, a strong spiritual connection, is not self-centered and has no problem helping others. Jupiter describes that desire for, for expansion and experience. So there's the desire and ego and, and, and desire to control can, can show up on that side. But the flip side of Jupiter encourages those strong spiritual connections to find balance in that regard. If it appears overdeveloped, or higher than the others, this can indicate someone who wants to dominate other people, self, uh, dominate other people, may be self-centered and has a lack of compassion. If it is flat or not a lot of influence, it indicates that one's self-confidence might be low, and is a presence of lack of ambition. When we get to the fingers themselves, we'll be talking about elements. Uh, Jupiter is here at the bottom of what is considered the fire element, which, which deals a lot with your personal passions and, and confidence in this regard. So not having a lot of influence on this mountain can represent weaknesses in that area, the lacking of confidence, the lacking of that inner fire. Here is Saturn. This represents the connection to your serious and responsible, practical qualities of yourself. 
This is an indicator of your patient's duty and responsibility, as well as one of modesty and the need for solitude and constraint. If this mount is normally elevated, it can indicate an individual who is friendly, independent, and who believes that things will happen as they should. If it appears overly developed, this could mean an individual who is stubborn to a fault, at times depressed, cynical, mistrusting, too shy, and too isolated from others. And a flat or amount that lacks influence can indicate disorganization, superficiality, and a lack of self-reflection. In a lot of ways, these mounts' developments and action will, will indicate the maturation of, uh, of the person in these areas. So if someone does not have a lot of Saturn influence, it's very likely that they haven't required uh, the, mat the maturing and the lessons that, that's to, that would be more present with someone with more Saturn influence. Sun, known as the Mount of Apollo. This will represent your sensitive, wise inner child. This is a poetic and romantic side of yourself. This reflects strength in parenthood and inspects our own parental relationships. This is like Leo's house and, and being very concerned with children. All of this will carry over astrologically with one another and inspects our own parental relationships. It indicates one's self-assurance, compassion, and stateliness. It indicates a desire to stand, stand out from others in a crowd. If this mount is normally elevated, it can indicate an outgoing person and someone who is flexible to changes. But if the, mo if the mount is overdeveloped, It'll be an indication of envy, lack of control, especially with your temper, and always causing problems with friends, partners, and relationships. It's too strong. That ego is too present. There's too much confidence, so it makes it uh, difficult to, to dial back that fire. If it is flat or if there is not a lot of development, it can indicate a person who is dull and not very outgoing. Making good decisions becomes difficult for that person especially when it comes to lack of self-esteem uh, and, and, and self-worth. They're used to letting uh, other people make decisions for them. So there will likely not be a lot of development there as well. And especially with, uh, with children, their, their fortune lines and developments on these mounts might not be strongly expressed because they haven't yet figured out who they are or have developed in these areas. And this is the Mount of Mercury. This emphasizes our modes of communication, our intellect, and our wit. This is our ability to relate to other people and our coworkers. It is an indicator of business, success, finances, practicality, shrewdness, and verbal sharpness and adaptability. If this mount is well defined, this can indicate an individual who has many interests, is flexible, and has very good communication skills. This person will be successful in business, or perhaps a psychologist, and is someone who can read people well. If it appears overtly developed, this can signify someone who tends to talk too much and might not always be truthful. The individual can be greedy and overly concerned with the acquisition of money and material good. But a flat or absent amount of mercury development can indicate a shy individual who has trouble communicating with others and also someone who will not achieve much financial success in their life. So when it came to the markings that we were talking about earlier, these can show up on any of these mounts, and they're all interpretable. So if there are traverse lines or vertical lines that show up in various parts of these mounts, it helps you uh, draw meaning based on its development. Has there been growth? Has there been challenges? Or has is this person not even uh, developed in this area yet? Here are all the mounts that are listed started with Venus and we got to Mars. There's both of our Marses. And then Jupiter, Saturn, Apollo, and Mercury. And the way that I remember these is starting from the pinky. The pinky is always Mercury. It's uh, M-A-S-J. Mass J will help, you, will help you remember this. That is Mercury, Apollo, Saturn, and Jupiter. This also introduces what is called the Mount of Neptune, which will really deal with uh, prim primordial qualities of ourself. The Mount of Neptune is found at the center and base of the palm. This position allows a link of the subconscious and conscious sides. If you have a padded area here, you are perceptive and a charmer. 
In addition, this is a busy mount, one with many lines that show an active dreamer. Triangle symbols are common on the palms of psychics. Listen to your dreams if you have triangles. And that's there at the bottom of that start, at the end of that lifeline or the start of the fortune line. Branches from this mount to bracelet lines on the wrist will show connections to past lives that is revealed through your dreams. This can be shown through the art of sleepwalking. It is not unusual if you or your child sleepwalks that this marking is on the mounted Neptune. It is said that you are looking for your, quote, old, your old self. Now what makes it difficult about reading the Mount of Neptune is that you'll notice that you have a lot of activity that starts here on, on your hand. It's the end of your lifeline, it's the start of your, your fortune line, and there is probably a lot of influence from, from the surrounding mounts that might make it difficult to interpret. But take it as a whole, and be able to, to see that the Mount of, Merc, uh, the Mount of Neptune represents uh, be, being subconsciously and consciously connected to our purpose. So on some level, there'll be people who are more subconsciously attuned to what they're doing, and there are some people who are much more uh, extroverted and connected to bringing about their life purpose. Here's the thumb with some rules of thumb. So we have a separator here. We have the top part of your line. It's gonna represent your, your will and your logic. And we're gonna test when we're reading palms the flexibility of this thumb. And what that's gonna teach us is how flexible and adaptive other people are. It describes how adaptive we are to new information and how receptive we are to trying new ideas. If it bends too far back, it'll reflect a spinelessness or too willing to bend to the will of others, and it reflects dependent personality type behaviors. If it is stiff and really, really strong, uh, being, being stuck in our ways will, can describe a stiff thumb, but being strong-willed is not always a bad thing. Sometimes having the strength to stand up to a lot can show up in the strong but stiff thumb. And will and logic the ratio of size between these two segments will reflect our preference to making decisions, whether we make our decisions based on logic or through our emotions or passion. Try to find a, ba find a balance between the two. There's the idea that some people will possess longer logic segments than their will segments, and they tend to make decisions uh, leaning toward logic, and, and vice versa with that. When there are markings that'll show up uh, on logic or will, can also affect the way thinking is concerned. For instance, a horizontal line in the area of logic might represent a struggle that you have in, in connecting thoughts in terms of your logic. Whereas a uh, difficulty in terms of willpower might represent difficulties uh, being inspired and motivated to, to connect and make action. The 12 signs of the zodiac are at your fingertips. There they all there. We have mutable signs at the bottom. We have fixed signs in the middle. And then we have cardinal signs at the fingertips. The cardinal signs will also describe the element of each finger. Aries is a fire sign. That pointer finger is a fire finger. Capricorn is an earth sign. That middle finger is an earth finger. The ring finger is crowned by cancer, and that's our, our emotions and our commitment finger. That's also why we tend to wear ring fingers when we get married, because it's representative of that, of that effect. And Libra crowns the air finger on the pinky. Let's see here. The pointer finger is crowned by the sign of Aries. This finger is governed by the element of fire. This is the action finger. It is the finger that points the way and shows drives and motivation. This is known as the Jupiter finger because Jupiter was at the bottom mount. So that'll be able to tell you the names of the fingers too. The middle finger is crowned by Capricorn and the element of the finger is Earth. It describes qualities and foundations of practicality and materialism, known as the Saturn finger. And the ring finger with emotional cancer at the helm. This finger deals with relationship commitments and emotional intuition. It is governed by water. It is known as Apollo, or the Sun Finger. The Pinky Finger, with Libra the King of Air, brings principles of ideas, communication, movement, and mental prowess. 
known as the mercury finger. Now we're going to go into each of these uh, modalities and kind of describe a little bit what you can assess for them because I want to go into them too individually. Basically, each of the signs has positive traits and negative traits. They're struggling with certain sign traits than others. So these are all our adaptive or passive traits. Gemini and I will describe adaptableness, communicativeness, being quick. Pisces is understanding, deals with empathy and sensitivity. Virgo is organized, analyzing, and helpful. And Sagittarius is independent, adventurous, and fun. And those are if you have the positive traits of those signs showing up in influences, whether you have vertical lines or negative lines. It's a good general way to look at this part. So if you possess a lot of vertical lines in this area, this makes you adaptive. That makes you flexible in the areas of your mind, flexible in emotions, flexible in the areas of earth and work, and flexible in terms of your passions, drive, and motivation. But if you possess the weaknesses of these signs, they'll show up as horizontal lines. These are the areas that you might be struggling with if, if they show up on this hand. So with Gemini, you deal with mischief, mischievousness, distance, especially in terms of emotions and mind, and gossip. Pisces is dependent, inconsistent, and dreamy. Virgo is fastidious, shrewd, and critical. And Sagittarius is detached, deals with wander, lust, and reckless. So if you have any horizontal lines in any of these places, they can manifest as the challenges that those signs would find. So a Sagittarius has a lot of horizontal lines, and it's very possible you've, it's been difficult for you to find independence and freedom and be able to express these deeper aspects of your mind. This will bring us to our fixed signs here in the middle. Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio. This is persisting and stubborn qualities. Taurus is determined, hardworking, and strong. Aquarius is inventive, gregarious, and a visionary. Leo is confident, regal, and demonstrative. And Scorpio is passionate, observant, and piercing, if they possess the positive qualities of those traits. This will also show uh, positive parts in this middle here will show people who are able to endure, persist, and survive. They, they're able to keep consistency in their own lives. If you have the opposite problem, Tauruses are stubborn, slow to respond, and quiet. Aquariuses are rebellious, unreliable, and contrary. Leos are melodramatic, showy, and insecure. And Scorpios are suspicious, skeptic, and vindictive. So if you have any negative traits that are showing up here, this will be the areas in your life where you're struggling to be persistent or struggling to be consistent. Um, if there are horizontal lines in Taurus, it's very possible that you're dealing with... Uh, with that shyness and, and that stubborn nature trying to trying to change, or whether or not there's a there's an issue with where you are trying to express yourself. Now the top of these will represent our cardinal signs. They're also what will give each finger a particular element, and it's all color coordinated there. So cardinal signs are your active dominant signs. Aries are energetic, active, and creative when positively expressed. Capricorns are responsible, builders, and very practical. Positive Cancer is nurturing, comforting, and affectionate, and positive Libra is charming, poetic, and, and mediator. A lot of positive development um, on your cardinal aspects of your hands typically doesn't happen until we get, uh, until we get much older. But there's a lot of people who possess a lot of uh, mature traits at a young age that are able to be commanding and involved in their own life. Just because someone's an Aries doesn't mean they have a strongly expressed Aries. So don't expect just because they have a sign or an element in common that things are going to be hunky-dory. So in the weaknesses of the cardinal signs, our natures are dealing with impulsiveness for Aries, tyrannical and restless. Capricorn has to deal with being cold, calculating, and dull. Cancer struggles with moodiness, being involved in other people's lives, and being brooding. In Libra, it gets indecisive, and it overthinks things, and it, they tend to disassociate themselves. So again, if there are any horizontal lines showing up here, these are all areas in your life where you have a hard time being extroverted, having a hard time really um, describing these cardinal aspects in terms of your passions, your practicality, your emotionality, and your logic. So here we have 
a very low res potato quality picture of the astrology signs being represented in all these areas of the hand. We just went through the fingers, so they're still represented there. We have Libra over here, which is the Mount of Venus. Venus is what governs Libra. The Mount of the Moon is represented in Cancer over here. The Mount of Mercury has Gemini. The Mount of Apollo has Leo. The Mount of Saturn has Capricorn. And it looks like a blending of, a, of an Aquarius there. And that's probably more directly related to the tip of the fortune line itself. And Sagittarius, which deals with, which is Jupiter's uh, governing sign. And then for the upper and lower Mars, it looks like we have uh, Scorpio and Taurus here in the area of house and home. Now, when I was describing that your mental line and your life line move through these areas that tends to represent childhood and your early, your early experiences with mom and dad, well, when it comes to Taurus, there is that idea of dealing with the house and home and dealing with, you know, these, uh, these close relationships. So if there is difficulty showing up, and a lot of people have a lot of breakages and lines in this area, very generally, it is problems with childhood and feeling secure in their home environment. It is a, it is a reoccurring pattern that you're able to, to see in a lot of hands. We have Aries also represented in our willpower over here. And then the Mount of Neptune has Pisces down here. And that's how all of those energies work together. All right. So in this diagram, we're showing these various mount areas of the palm. So here's a big area for Venus, a big area for the area of Neptune. Here's Venus. Here's one of the Marses. Here are those there. It shows you some example of marriage lines, fortune line, and as well as telling you the names of each finger, the Mercury finger, the Sun finger, the Saturn finger, your personal identity thumb and your understanding of the world around you. And if you look at each opposite hand, they're, they're reflective of one another. So the heart line runs this way, and it runs that way. Life lines run down there, but it's, it's, it's all mirrored between the hands themselves. So all this carries over from one hand to another, so there isn't a major change there. So here's some frequently asked questions about palmistry. Aren't the lines of the palms just creases formed by hand movement? People who are skeptical about palmistry and hand analysis say that palm lines are just creases or folds in the skin where the hand moves, the grass and bends. Even scientists will call these lines creases, but they are simply not caused by the folding of the hand. And this becomes really, really elevated if you have a lot of vertical lines and such where you'll notice that no matter how you bend the hand, that, that shape isn't being generated. That these uh, lines and influences are being created by some sort of external expression of your physical form. What are, what is dermatoglyphics? So dermatoglyphics, from the ancient word meaning derma of skin and glyph of carving, is the scientific study of fingerprints, lines, mounds, and shapes of the hands. The uniqueness of a person's fingerprints have been thought to be tied to a person's personality and preference by analy analyzing dermatoglyphics. The belief is basis for the study of palmistry. So there are even scientists who are, who are looking at various arrangements of, of lines in the palms and, and fingerprinting and, and whether they're whirls and swirls to, to compare them to uh, police records of, of people who have struggled emotionally or psychologically to make these assessments to, to draw a pattern based on numbers alone. Can palmistry tell how long I will live? No, the lifeline does not foretell the length of life, so don't worry if you have a very short lifeline. In modern hand reading, which is called chirology, which is taken from the traditional word chiromancy, which was the old name of uh, palmistry, tells us a lot about your health, energy, and lifestyle. A short line may mean that you need to use your energy in short bursts, with rests in between. More common is a short line in which one stops and restarts, usually with two lines overlapping for a while. This shows changes in your lifestyle. 
Do you have to be a psychic to read hands? Is it a gift? No, anyone can learn palmistry. Hand reading is a skill like map reading or cracking a code or doing a jigsaw puzzle. You learn all the basics of what each feature of the hand might represent, and then you put all the pieces together to build up a picture of a person. No two hands are the same, so the combination of features is unique to that person. The more readings you do, the more natural intuition can increase, but if you are using the analytical techniques to teach your interpretation of the person's hands, the only mystery is why does it work at all? Why is it that uh, by interpreting these lines we can accurately determine person's personality traits and such? Well, that's, that's still for, uh, up for debate and is still a mystery. Is palmistry a science? The interpreting character and temperament from the hand has not been, quote, scientifically proven yet. Despite the fact that hands have been studied for over 3,000 years, it was less than 150 years ago when scientists discovered that the hands are connected to the brain. Not many scientists are expert palm readers and vice versa, which makes it difficult to get impartial knowledge and information in the field of dermatoglyphics, especially when they're so compared to mysticism and magic. And we finished up our tarot reading earlier, but next course we'll, coming up we'll be talking about crystals and meditation. And that's the end of this session. Thank you very much.